Greetings, brothers and sisters. As always, we are thankful to the one God for blessing us to be present. We thank him for his divine wisdom and his perfect, infallible understanding of all things. We thank him for being the true sender and teacher of all holy prophets and of all holy apostles. Most of all, we thank him for the way of holiness revealed to them for our learning, to all of our ministers and to all of our guests. We thank God for you that are present. Most of all, we thank God for the word that remains infallible, and it certainly remains perfect. As I was sitting here reading, uh, as I, we always get thousands of letters from all over, and, you know, people are prone to fight what they don't understand. Sometimes the most simplest scripture, but if God don't help you, you won't understand it. Out of the many times we have explained baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, people still fight it. Many times we explain there's one God, people still fight it. Many times we explain that God have never called and sent a woman to preach the gospel. People still fight it. But at the same time, you always get letters where people are thankful that their understanding have been enlightened and their understanding have came open. Uh, we have to, we have about 15 or more to be baptized out of Houston, Texas. So I have to send some brothers in Houston. We have about we have a group of Hispanic brothers and sisters who came out of the UPC near Fresno, California. And we got a second group out of an area I think it's called Sunny Hill somewhere. Sunny something California. Sunnyville. What's that? Sunnyville? No, so I don't know what Sunnyville. It sounds like something from a soap opera the name of the place but um, another group that left I think the UPCI which is still part of the United Pentecostal foolishness and how they're how they're so grateful that the understanding has came open I received several letters from women preachers who left the UPC one woman said, listen to you, maybe realize I had no business in the pulpit to begin with. If you just consider what you hear, God will give you the understanding if you want to be right. But don't expect God to open up your understanding and you fight his word at the same time. Nothing is wrong with the scriptures. The problem is not in God, the problem is in us. God is perfect. <clears throat> God is infallible. God willing, this Sunday I'll be here. Um, <clears throat> I have to go to Union Spring, Alabama uh, next week because, as I mentioned, the preacher turned his church over to us. And we got a letter from a preacher out of Montgomery, Alabama, who also want to turn his church over to us from the House of Prayer. House of Prayer's Daddy Grace organization. He said he'd been watching the broadcast and he'd been watching the telecast and, and Montgomery. So I'm going to try to kill two birds with one stone. I contact Minister Martin in Mobile to reach this minister and have him to, uh, and I just try to stop at both places. Union Springs is 30 minutes from Montgomery. I'm hearing from preachers throughout America and around the world who actually want to be a part of this uncompromising message and bringing their congregations in. I'm not impressed because, you know, I'm like this. If you come any other way, the Bible says you are a thief and a robber. And I don't care if you got a million followers. The word of God won't change when you get here. For nothing 
and for nobody. We cannot be bought and we're not a sellout. The end of all things is at hand. <clears throat> and I'm one who's not moved by materialism. That materialism don't faze me. The most important thing in this life is God. Not your house, not your car, not your money, not your clothing. God. When you was born, what did you have? Nothing. When you die, what you going to have? Nothing. The Bible said, naked you came in the world. Naked you shall return. Until these men who's pretending to be preachers respect God from that law, you will always have these materialistic loving junkies in the pulpit. God ain't ever sent no preacher to preach you how to get rich. God sent a man to teach you how to stay out of hell. That's what the Bible's designed for. And that's why they want me dead. Yeah, you got religions want me dead, man. I got so many Hebrew Israelites that want my head. And I tell them, it ain't like I'm ducking from anybody. That message we preach in Baltimore done, done shook the Hebrew Israelites so bad. Some Hebrew Israelites have wrote me and told me, Pastor Jennings, I'm uh, brother so-and-so and so-and-so, and I'm not like these other Hebrew Israelites that's fighting you. One Hebrew Israelite said, I'm a Hebrew Israelite that got good sense. He said, I believe what you preach. But there's other Hebrew lights, you know, who says I'm going to hell because I'm clean shaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I'm going to hell because I'm clean shaven. And the Bible says it's a shame for a man to have long hair. How backward can you be? If you look at me walking down the street from the back, you should be able to tell whether I'm a man or a woman. Yeah, that's true. You shouldn't see me doing all this. <laughs> My wife doing that way and I'm doing that way. No. <laughs> Got to be a difference. Yeah. Well, out of all the hate people have for holiness, one thing been proven, nobody has been able to stop God from moving. Amen. Nobody. Sure. Black, white, yellow, brown, red, you truly want to be saved and want to learn God's truth. Once you watch that telecast, it won't take you long to be hooked. I can't even count the amount of people. I remember one, one letter I was reading. <laughs> Gentleman said, when I, when I started watching you, I don't even care about nothing else on television. <laughs> Another man wrote me and said, I almost lost my job because I was supposed to be working. I'm watching you on YouTube. It's beautiful when you find the right thing. Because if you really got in mind to be saved, what people don't realize is this. Your heart will long for God before you even know Him. That's true. That's true. Don't even know him. But your heart will long for him. And this is what makes people try this, try that, try the other, try this, try that. They're longing, they're hunting for something. There's an appetite in them and they try so many worldly things and none of it gives give them satisfaction so they run up on God. That's true. When you run up on God and God teach you His way, the right way, then you'll find that appetite. Start to be satisfied. Because what God do to you, nothing out here can match it. That's true. That's true. That's why God desires 
that a man and woman give him all of self. Mind, soul, body, spirit. When the Lord said all souls are mine, that's the completeness of man. Mm -hmm. Everything about us belongs to God. And one way or the other, we're going to give it to him. Even if he got to take it. It don't, it don't hurt him to take it. And he's not hesitant in taking it. Yeah. All right, let me brief you, God willing, in the Bible, to my convention committee. After morning service on Sunday, I want to meet with all the convention committee. So please, uh, not to linger around. When I get up there in that room, I make sure all of y'all is in there because I got a busy day. And I don't want to be waiting around for this one to come or that one to come. Because I got a busy day on Sunday. This year is almost gone. We had ministers out of, uh, I think about six or seven ministers coming out of different parts of the South. New ministers, elders from other organizations who want to be here during the convention, who want to meet with us and want to come work with us. And, Hispanic congregation out of uh, California, the minister there will be here. He talked to me and uh, he said, I've been telling people you're my pastor. He said, before I met you, he said, I can tell people. Pastor Jennings is my pastor and I'm in first church of our Lord Jesus Christ. I said, all right. I said, I see when I put you on the grill when you get here. He said, that's what I'm looking for you to do, Pastor Jennings. I said, I'm going to put you on the grill. I said, the Bible is my grill, and I don't turn the heat down. I turn it up so everybody can know you've been grilled. My interest is this, that people are taught the right thing. Amen. Not sometimes, all the time. Mm -hmm. People must be taught the right thing. You got one soul. Amen. How many things did Adam do before he got put out to God? One. How many? One. How many lies did it take to send you to hell? One. I'll never forget it. One lie. One. One. If the Lord says he's going to present to himself a glorious church not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that means I can't even have a lie in my belief. If I got a lie in my belief, that's a spot. Amen. Not only is it a spot, it's a wrinkle because that's a teaching that's out of whack. It's out of place. The Word of God have to come and press that wrinkle out, press it hard. That's why I'm not compromising with nobody. I am not bargaining with nobody about nothing. When it comes to the word of God, it's going to be God's way or nobody's way. Mm -hmm. Are we listening? Amen. Fifth chapter of the book of Galatia. Begin at verse 1. Follow me. In the book of Galatians chapter 5 and at verse 1. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And what? And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast. This is Galatia chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Stand fast, hold fast, be firm, be solid, unmovable, uncompromising. Don't mix God faith. Amen. You know you got some that drink liquor. They don't want it diluted. They don't want no water in it. They want it straight. Amen. I never drunk alcohol, but I drink scripture. And uh, I like my scripture foolproof. <laughs> I don't want it diluted with nothing. Amen. I don't even want ice on it. I don't want no water mixed in it. Mm -mm. I want it pure. 
You know, some alcohol, I've seen some men drink alcohol and body face expression, brother, is so strong. Mm -hmm. I mean, it must about to burn a hole in the chest. Mm -hmm. So to kind to uh, cut down on the strength of it so they don't be affected so bad, you know, they water it down. May put some fruit juice in it. Vodka and orange juice. I think I got the favor in the hood. <laughs> but uh, when it comes to the will of the Lord, you can't mix it. Amen. You can't add opinion, philosophy, ideology. And the dictionary is not always right. That's true. That's in true. its information mm -hmm. regarding the word of God. That's true. You can go to the dictionary and look up Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The dictionary is going to tell you it's Trinity. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what it will tell you. Mm -hmm. You look up the Son of God, Jesus, in the dictionary, it may tell you it's the second person in the Godhead. <laughs> so the dictionary is not always correct. That's true. That's true. In this information, you know why? The dictionary is not given to a man by revelation. Amen nor the dictionary divinely inspired. So spirit and carnality differ in view and perspective in knowledge, in level of knowledge, and in understanding. <coughs> Men's understanding have a tendency of being corrupt. Amen. God's understanding is not corrupt at all. Amen. God's understanding is without corruption. He's a God that is incorruptible. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That's why I believe everything he said. Yeah. Listen. Stand fast therefore in the liberty. liberty. The freedom. Now, in order for you to stand fast in liberty or in freedom, you first got to be free. Amen. You can't stand fast in something you don't have. You have to be free first. Amen. Now, there are some things we are trying to get free from or to get free of. And there are some things we are almost free from. Mm -hmm. That which we are freed from, stand in that freedom. That which you're trying to be free from, keep fighting till you get total freedom. Amen. That which you're not free from, ask God to set you free. Amen. Because you don't want to be tied to nothing that will cause you to go to hell. Amen. Am I right, I said? Amen. It ain't nothing worth going to hell over. Amen. And I wouldn't be tied to nothing and know I'm going... You take a person who's pleading for his life and them gangsters get a hold of him, soak his feet in quick dry cement, drag him to the pier. That man know if he hit that water, it is absolute sure death. Because once he put his feet get in that cement, uh, he, he's not going to float up. Yeah. They ain't even got to tie his hands and feet. If they toss him over, he's going down. Because the weight going to pull him down. Mm -hmm. Weight will pull you down. Amen. Did not the Bible say, let us lay aside every what? Mm -hmm. Weight of what? Yes. So, it's not sin, weight. Yes, it is. Sin can cause you spiritually not to function mentally, not to function emotionally properly not to function physically properly and without question not to function spiritually properly because sin affects all the dynamics of one's being. Amen. One of the most difficult things that a person has is hating sin. See, there are some sins we hate and there are some sins we just ain't hating yet. Is that right, I said? true. See, a lot of you ain't but, saying that, man. He's laughing about it. Because you, <laughs> but it's true. It's Some folks true. say, I hate all sin. Stop lying. That's a lie. Amen. Telling that lie. You know there's something you don't hate because you still love to do it. 
Do you still want to do it? Well, Pastor Dennis, I'm not doing it, but do you still want to do it? Uh-huh. Yes. All right, then. You may not be doing it, but if the want is there, because there's still an attraction there. That's right. That's true. Amen. I don't care if you <laughs> jump so much until you root up all this wood on the floor. Mm-hmm. That, your jumping ain't going to change your nature. That's true. Don't you hear Paul said, in me dwelleth no good thing? Mm-hmm. If an apostle admit that about his flesh, yeah. you ain't no apostle. You might as well admit that about yourself. Yeah. Amen. Everybody in here, the devil working. Amen. If there's anyone here the devil don't work in, tell a lie and raise your hand. <laughs> oh. Devil working everybody in here. Yeah. Certainly he does. That's true. The only one the devil don't work in is God. Amen. The devil even worked in the angels. That's true. And made a whole third of them backslide and was put out of heaven. So when these men, these false prophets over the air tell you, Devil ain't got no power. Uh huh. The devil got so much power, he made him say it. <laughs> made that false prophet say it and made the false prophet think it. Mm-hmm. Devil ain't got no power. Listen, I wish the devil didn't have no power. Amen. All right, listen at this. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And what? And be not entangled again. Be not what? And be not entangled again. Now listen. If it says don't be entangled again, obviously, we were once out, mm-hmm. and now I'm pulled back in. Yeah. Sometime when you get pulled back in, Amen. the second go around may hold you tighter mm-hmm. than the first go around. Yeah. Is that right? That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the struggle. To come out of something the second time is more difficult for some people. Now, some folks say, oh, when you're constantly doing wrong, you ain't serious. No, you can't label somebody like that. Amen. You ever consider that individual maybe struggling with something? Because the question was asked to Jesus, how many times am I to forgive my brother? Jesus didn't say once. That's right. He didn't say once, did he? Mm, no. So if he said seven times, such and such, which means often. Yeah. But if you got to keep forgiving your brother about the same thing, or your sister about the same thing, it's because it's a struggle with them. Mm-hmm. Now, you're not in a position to look down on a person who is struggling. Amen. As if you're the master of the gospel of God. Amen. That's true. Well, Pastor Jennings ain't struggling with what they're struggling with. All right, but you're dealing with something. Something. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with something. Well, Pastor Jennings, I don't do anything. Do you think? <laughs> yeah, that's enough. Yeah, the Bible yeah. said the very thought of foolishness is what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pastor Jennings, I don't do anything. Do you think? Yeah. The very thought of foolishness is what? Sin. Amen. So don't pat yourself on the back. Scratch it. <laughs> Scratch the back. Go pat yourself on the back. Because if you overcome one thing, you good. Mm-hmm. Give it time. It may come back. You hope it don't. Old folks say if it's not one thing, it's another. If it's not another, it's the same thing. That's true. That's true. There's some things God deliver you from. God bless some. It don't come back. Mm -hmm. Which is good. But then something can come that's worse than than what you done came out of. Be not entangled again with what? With the yoke of bondage. With, and what, what does it put you in? With the yoke of bondage. Bondage? 
You ever seen a person in bondage physically? Hands tied, feet tied, mouth is gagged, no freedom. Amen. Mental bondage. When you're so mentally scarred through unpleasant experiences, until it's a contributing factor to your unhealthy way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Let me make an example. A woman could have been so physically, mentally, emotionally abused by one man. Yeah. Just one man. Until after that, she says, no man is no good. Yeah, that's true. She actually put all men in the same melting pot, mm -hmm. which is unfair and wrong. Yeah. But some do it. Some men do the same thing. One woman then took him to the cleanest. <laughs> he loved, I mean, he loved her. You know, put her name on his bank accounts and all that stuff. And <laughs> He saved up a lot of good money and she camouflaged and whatnot and projected the image of being supportive and God-fearing and did a little move in the chair and even did a little tongue, Sire, Sire. <laughs> he didn't know who Sire was and he thought she had the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. <laughs> Found out she only had a spook and, and bad intent. Because of that one experience, yeah. he indicted all the women and said, no woman is, in, is any good, which is not true. Yeah. But because of the intensity of the experience on the man and the woman, sometimes it puts them in a form of mental bondage. Amen. And as a result of such, they walk around very judgmental. Mm -hmm. They are quick to judge before they find out the truth of the matter. They're quick to label. They're quick to assume. They're quick to indict. They look at everybody through a gloomy lens. Are you listening? Some people don't go to church today because they had such bad experience in churches and in their minds, it ain't no church right. Amen. That's true. That's what people say. Ain't no church right. People have wrote me by the hundreds who been in that predicament mm -hmm. and cleave to that telecast and have said by the number, the truth of God telecast is the first program that have given me hope. I remember a man wrote me and said he ain't been to church in 60 years. Wow. He hasn't been to church in 60 years and he never wanted anything to do with church. When he saw that telecast, it gave him hope. And he said, that's what I've been looking for for over 60 years. It gives you a sense of the damage that religion have done and is presently doing to a whole lot of people. Religion have damaged more people than helped them. Religion have misled them, have lied to them, have used them, and abused them. And have you take note now, God, the teaching of God is lesser and lesser and lesser and lesser. Until in a lot of religions, God ain't taught at all. That's true. So, What's commonly taught, as I often say, <clears throat> in the religions of the world, prosperity. Because the devil knows people love money. Yeah. People love money more than they love God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the love of money is the root or the foundation of how much? All, all evil. All of it. It's not a sin to have it. It's a sin to love it. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Be not entangled what? Be not entangled again. With the yoke of bondage. 
That statement alone may cause some of us to disassociate ourselves with some of our former associates. Amen. Sometimes our former communication keep us in bondage, keep us thinking like a fool, keep us acting like a fool. Be not in what? Entangled again. Entangled, trapped. Mentally and emotionally incarcerated. Some of us are mentally and emotionally imprisoned. I mean, and, and, and that past experience, have you ever heard of the term institutionalized? Mm -hmm. A lot of inmates are institutionalized. In other words, they've been in prison so long until they know that life better than they know the life outside of prison. Yeah. So when they do come out of prison, they can never adapt. Mm -hmm. When a man come out of prison and he or she adapts to this life, they're not institutionalized. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know you can be emotionally and mentally institutionalized through whatever experience you had that was really, that really ruined you? Amen. Sometimes when it ruined you, it also institutionalized you. You became a prison of your own past. That's why the way you think, you think like a damaged person. You walk like a damaged person. You act like a damaged person. Your emotions is the emotions of a damaged person. And whenever you deal with people, you deal with people from the perspective of a damaged person. You never talk to, you talk at. You always got your guard up. You always ready to fight. You always ready to defend. You always ready to cut. You always ready to cut. Amen. That's right. Hardly ever in a good mood. Want to take everybody's head off if they sneeze. <laughs> What's the sneezing for? <laughs> That's true. You can't disagree peaceably. You disagree and cuss out at the same time. Mm. You look at everything from a negative perspective. You hardly have any positivity in your blood or in your mouth or in your thought process. Mm -hmm. You are institutionalized. Mm -hmm. True freedom, true deliverance from sin or bondage is broader than the body not indulging. True freedom is when my mind is free okay. that when I think of my past, it has no effect on me because emotionally God has healed me of that wound. Mm -hmm. So now when I think of it, it's a testimony. Yeah. It's not a hindrance. It's a testimony. Mm -hmm. When I talk about the way God delivered me out of falsehood, what the former false prophet done to me, tried to destroy me as a kid. I remember my mother asked me one day, Gene, do it bother you? You talk about it, so <laughs> do it bother you? I told her, no. Man, it don't, I don't break a sweat. It don't faze me at all. For me, it's a testimony. The Bible says this, He that has received his testimony have set to his seal that God is true. Now, you've got two options. Either be somebody's inmate mm -hmm. or be free. Amen. Amen. What do you mean? You either live in your past and let your past be your present and your future. And keep wilding and complaining, why did he do this? Why did she do that? Years that went by, they're not even nowhere around. they gone. Mm -hmm. And putting somebody else in bondage. Yeah. Yeah. So, would you let a person who's no longer in your life still be in your mind? That's right. In your heart? Mm -hmm. And because of your past experience with him, her, or them, until even at death, they got power over you from the grave and you live it. Wow. 
You don't let nobody have that type of power over you other than God. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Jennings, how do I overcome my past? You overcome your past by stop allowing yourself mentally and emotionally live in it. Mm -hmm. And you can't go back there and correct nothing anyway, can you? That's right. No, no. So stop feeling sorry for yourself. You bet. Keep grieving about what you can't change. Listen. If I can't change my clothes, then I'm going to thank God for the clothes I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I can't change the damage that happened in the past, then I'm going to thank God for delivering me from the past. In other words, let me change my words. Besides, oh man, he did this, he did that, she did this, he did that. Try changing. Mm -hmm. Lord, I thank you for bringing me out of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. I thank you he ain't in my life no more. Mm -hmm. I thank you she ain't in my life no more. Yeah. If your approach towards negativeness, you can't approach negativity negative. Amen. Because it keeps you negative. You can't approach the devil with the devil. Amen. You gotta approach the devil with God. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? My former preacher told me nobody would ever follow me. And I told this cat about the vision that God gave me and told him, you know, the Lord showed me, and of course I was young. <clears throat> The Lord showed me building churches all around the world, world to, and I'm telling him this, and I'm 15, 16, 17, 18 telling him this. He looked at me and said, do I look like a fool? I didn't answer that. <laughs> but he told me, God have not told you nothing. God have not showed you nothing. Now, I respect age, so I didn't back talk. I just said quiet. Because as a young man, I was blessed to distinguish what was God and what was not. The only thing that kept me from backsliding as a teenager was the work that God showed me. And it gave me something to look forward to. Amen. That's exactly what it did. The work that God showed me as a teenager gave me something to look forward to. When the preacher set me down for preaching what truth I knew and told the people, if you just say amen to Brother Gino, I'm going to throw you out the church. Hmm. He said, I'm going to throw you out if I just hear you saying amen. And I remember one Saturday night, I was up teaching. I think I may have been about 17. And the Holy Ghost started falling. i never forget. He got up and told everybody, all right, all right, all right, just summer down. <laughs> summer down. Then he quoted the scripture. Spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Mm -mm -mm. Doing everything calm down. He was trying to actually kill the spirit. Yeah. Everything calm. He said, I'm going to wait everything calm down. <laughs> <laughs> then he sat back in the chair. I'm standing in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Then he sat back in the chair. He said, All right, now go ahead and start again. Mm. I picked right up where I left off. Hold on, Holy Ghost fell again. <laughs> he said, all right, that's enough. All of y'all get out of here and go home. It's wow. late. Wow. So you got a choice. Allow 
your past make you a product of it or you be better than it. Amen. Is that right? That's right. You got that choice. Mm -hmm. All of us got that choice. The book says, choose ye this day. Everybody got that choice. Either you can be a product of it or you can be better than it. Amen. I am not a product of falsehood. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm not. God has blessed me to be better than where I came from. Amen. Because I was determined to be better than where I came from. Amen. And when you are determined to be better than where you come from, you work towards that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. You work towards it. Amen. Amen. And you will find yourself developing and getting better mentally and emotionally because where you used to complain, it goes from complaining to now I'm testifying about it. Yeah. It, it, it falls in a different heading. Wherein you used to complain, man, this, man, that. But now when you talk about it, you're testifying. Mm -hmm. You're not complaining. Because now your attitude about it changed. Amen. In order for your attitude to change, the way you think got to change. That's right. The past have a lot of power. Amen. It can grip you, hold you, stop you, only if you allow it to have more power than your present state of being. Amen. No demon should be able to reach from the grave. And hold you back? Amen. Are you listening? Former preacher that I was raised under. I was blessed to disconnect from him while I was still under him. My disconnection from him didn't start when I left. The moment God started dealing with me, opened my eyes, the disconnection stopped. Mm -hmm. The moment God started opening up your understanding, then your disconnection starts then. That's right. Don't wait till you're absent. Mm -hmm. Don't wait till you're physically absent. That's right. Start disconnecting the moment you start understanding. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you understand, you start detaching. Yeah. Amen. So, hallelujah. That's when detaching starts. You don't just understand and start talking about, oh, I'm glad I understand. I got, you understand to get an understanding is for a purpose. That's right. So what do you do with your understanding? Do you sit it aside and just talk about or brag you understand? Or do you put your understanding into action? Amen. Amen. Understanding can make you better or make you worse. Amen. One must decide what they do with their knowledge and how they approach life with their new understanding of self and their surroundings. Never allow your past to create your prison. Amen. Never allow a demon from your past be your warden. Amen. Until you take on the characteristics of the one that have damaged you. 
You think like them. You act like them. You talk like them. Your character's like them. Your hateful's like them. You're unloving like them. You use people like them. You lie on people like them. In other words, everything you learn from them. Mm -hmm. Amen. You complain about them. But yet you don't complain about yourself who's their twin. Are you listening? Anything that's unhealthy, no good. Unfit. You want to be detached from it. Amen. Sometimes the shaping of a character, the, con the, the contribution to the shaping of a character sometimes is who we are around and what we are around. That's true. Because violent, we don't trust nobody. Some folks say, I don't trust no man. Stop that line. <laughs> when your car break down, you call a man. <laughs> Well, I don't trust no man. All right. When your house catch on fire and all the men out there with holes, it's just stop them. No, 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 no. I don't trust you. Let your house burn. Yeah. <laughs> you get educated. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor Jenner, don't God tell us not to trust no man? No. Even God said, Pastor Paul said about God, how God trusts him the with the gospel. That's it's a true. certain way that God is against us trusting flesh. Mm -hmm. He said, cursed be the man that trusts in man that makes flesh his arm. Mm -hmm. That means you're not supposed to trust flesh in the same manner that you trust God. Amen. Because God never fails. Mm -hmm. Flesh will fail you. You know, because the flesh may get sick and can't be there or die and can't be there. God, he never fails. Problem with people and trusting God, they can't see Him. They see flesh. Amen. So God challenged that and says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence, or evidence is proof. Mm -hmm. It's the proof <laughs> of things not seen. Mm -hmm. Faith is the proof. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. Faith is the proof of what you don't see. Right. Your faith is the proof. That's right. Hallelujah. Only God can come up with something like that. Yeah. Because our way of thinking, I got to see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God said, no, for you to believe me, you ain't got to see me. I want you to believe without seeing. Yeah. Amen. And your faith is your Amen. proof. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. That's something, brother. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory to God. Your faith, I say. That's your proof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it easy to believe God? Not all the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard to believe Him. Mm -hmm. And in your heart, you still know with God all things are possible. Yeah. We know this. Sometimes, thank God, we still struggle believing in Him, trusting in Him. That's true. That's true. Amen. When we ventured out for this campus, the reason why at first I didn't tell a lot of people about it, because there's some, man, when you talk about going forward, there's some people, if you tell them, instantly, it's like bringing gloom. I talked to God for many days. I first saw this campus in 2014. Mm. And I was coming in and out of this campus for two years. When I first came here, I brought my brother Rick, and my mother came with me. You know, Rick always say, deep, deep, Gene. Gene, this is deep. <laughs> this is deep, Gene. And uh, I was in and out. 2014, until we made settlement last year. 
But I made every move and had to trust God. We had no financial backing yet. And Frankfurt Avenue was already sold. Mm. <laughs> wow. I signed that agreement of sales and sold Frankfurt Avenue to a developer. And we had nothing in black and white yet that we have financial backing. First financial company turned us down because of what we believe. Second financial company turned us down because of our faith. When the other financial camp company came, Mr. Willis, my representative, uh, business associate, he told them, he said, all right, look, check Pastor Jennings' website, see his statement of faith, that way you don't waste this man's time, because this man is the type, he don't like his time being wasted. They told him, well, we don't care what he believes. We just want his business. That's all I wanted. But Frankfurt Avenue was sold. When we was holding services in Frankfurt, <laughs> when we was holding services in Frankfurt, That's right. we was paying rent. Mm -hmm. We was paying rent. <laughs> <laughs> we already sold it. And we was paying rent. And I was asking God. I, I pray to ask God, I do not want to be paying no rent a year, two years. I want to yeah, get out of yeah. here. Yeah. This is what we're looking for. This is what we want. And I want you to make it happen. And the way the saints, when we let them know what was what, and the way the churches throughout America and the foreign countries rallied, and the way they sacrificed, you know, the saints in Jamaica is poor. Yeah. But do you know the saints in Jamaica with all the churches? first gave a check of $10,000 of American money. Mm. The second day is poor. Then they all got together and worked again and sent another check of $10,000. Wow. Checks came all the way from Australia, Canada. And they gave us the wrong figures at settlement and said we had to come up with over 700000 and then when they read it, we had to come up with about a million dollars and some change. Mm -mm -mm. But because the saints sacrificed, <clears throat> we had every penny. Every penny we had. Every penny we had. Faith is the proof. Yeah. Hallelujah. Good. Hallelujah. 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 It's the proof. Yeah. Now. When you're waiting on God for something, it is hard sometimes to believe God mm -hmm. because of how long you wait or what you're waiting on God for. Sometimes it's easy for us to believe God for what we may say small things. Let me make this example. Sometimes it's easier for us to believe God to heal us of a headache than it is for us to believe God to raise the dead. Yeah, that's true. But with God, healing a headache and raising the dead Same. is equal to him. That's right. Same. <laughs> now, do you get what I'm saying? It ain't equal in our eyes. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I die... And y'all gathered at my burial and wit witnessed me being buried. And then five years later, I come walking through that door at the International Convocation hmm. and tell the folks, God brought me back. All the chairs going to be on the floor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, and yet y'all know God can do anything. Yeah. But y'all look at that as that, that's too much that God done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of times we, <clears throat> we limit God. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, we limit him. My father been dead going on 27 years. And I know that if it was God's will, God can bring him back. Sure, God can bring him back, put all the flesh back on his bones, and make him look the same way he did 
before he snatched the soul out? Yes, he can. That's true. I want to say, why would you say that? Because God said he is the resurrection. Yeah. And he said he's the life. He never put no time on how long you was dead. That's the true. proof with that is in the book of Ezekiel. When he gathered those dry bones, there was no flesh even on the bone. Yeah. And for that to happen, you had to be dead a long time. Yeah. Because the bones were scattered. Mm -hmm. They were dead so long <laughs> until the bones were scattered, yeah. broken up. But he told the prophet, speak to the wind. Mm -hmm. My God, glory to God. Yeah. Talk, talk. Yeah. And when he talked to the wind, the prophet said, I heard a noise. For he knows the Hallelujah. bones start coming together and flesh. Hallelujah. Let's start dressing back up and then they stood up. Mm -hmm. So how long you've been in the ground oh ain't got nothing to do with God. Mm -hmm. If God say, come on back. Hallelujah. I never met my grandmother. My grandmother was dead long before I was born. My grandmother was living now. She may be about 115 or 120. Never met her. She died in the 1950s. But God can actually bring her back. That's true. God can bring her back and make her walk right through that door. Yeah. With the same clothes that she was buried in. He said, I am. The resurrection. Bishop Johnson been there since 1961. God can bring Johnson back and make him walk right in Bayman Street and pick up preaching where he left off. That's true. And give him the same anointing. Mm -hmm. That's true. That needs to happen. <laughs> For Bayman Street, that needs to happen. <laughs> God, man, them folks that jump up and probably try to tear his clothes off and run. Not limiting God is our problem as yeah. members of the human family. Right. All of us is guilty of it. Me, Amen. you, all of us. Amen. Because of our carnal way of thinking, we put limitations on God of what he can do for you and what he will do for you. Sometimes because of our way of thinking, it cripples our faith. And this is why our past is our present behavior. Amen. Our past is our present thought process. Our past is our present spiritual handicap. The Bible says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. If ask God to give you mental, emotional, physical, spiritual freedom, where all the components Amen. of self is liberated. Because if you have any experience at all, if that mind ain't free, it affects you emotionally. That's true. Now, if it starts affecting you emotionally, you know what's the next thing going to happen. Your body going to feel it. Mm -hmm. Like my position, my position is extremely stressful. Yeah. I kid you not. And my body feels it. Man, you start getting aches and pains where you never had them. You can't be in my position and not and have a 100% peaceful life. Peace is like a luxury. It is. It's a luxury. But this position of leading people is a lifetime, I don't mean part-time, <laughs> lifetime, full-time stress. And the stress never decreases. It escalates all the time. It never gets lighter. It get worse and worse. There are certain scriptures people can read, and then there are certain scriptures people can read they can identify with mm -hmm. through experience. You understand? There's a statement that Brother Paul said by the Holy Ghost. 
that I can identify with 100%. Paul said, all the cares of the churches is upon me. That I can identify with. We don't just have, I'm not just a pastor of one building here. Mm-hmm. You got people pulling on you from all over, all around the world. I want you to set up churches, they think I'm Rockefeller. The way these folks requesting churches, you would think I was a multi-billionaire. I wish I was. I'd be planting churches like a farmer is planting tobacco. <laughs> churches would be popping up everywhere. It's a lot of hard mental and emotional and physical spiritual work that involves into saving souls. Amen. It's all of it. It's mental, emotional, physical, spiritual work. Every part of yourself is involved into the salvation of people's souls. And you have to have that desire. I believe that Paul said how his prayer and heart's desire for Israel is that they might be saved. Amen. I have that same desire. I want all of you to be saved. Make that first resurrection. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's why you hear us tell you that we're never changed. I mean that just as much as God means he's God. Nobody's coming in here to change this doctrine at all. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody out or nobody in. Amen. I done seen what these pitiful preachers have gotten in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s, and then, besides getting stronger, they get weaker. And you know what most time makes them change their teaching? Money or some woman. Mm-hmm. That's true. Some woman who got a problem with what he stand for, mm-hmm. and he started loving her more than he loved God, which empowers her. That's right. So she starts telling him, "Look, don't, look, don't, 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 don't worry about preaching that no more. That, that's years ago." And he like, "You don't want me to, you don't want to preach that." <laughs> 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 you don't want me to preach that? No, honey. Okay. I don't want you to preach that. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Stupid. He ought to go to hell. Yeah. Anytime a man turned on God because of a woman, he ought to go to hell right then. Amen. The floor ought to open up under his feet and go right to hell then. Amen. That's right. A woman ain't God, so why would you be, why would you feel like you forced to choose? Amen. It's an easy decision. When you choose God, you chose life. That's right. Amen. Am I right, sir? Amen. Amen. It's an easy decision. When you chose God over that man, sister, you chose life. That's right. Amen. And a woman born worth chasing. And a man breathing worth chasing. Mm-hmm. God, he's worth chasing. Yes, he is. Amen. Chase him all day. Hallelujah. Chase him all day. Chase God all night. Lose sleep over God. Amen. Huh? <laughs> Lose sleep over God. Lose sleep over the fact you don't have the Holy Ghost. Lose sleep over the fact that you do have the Holy Ghost, but you're getting weak. Mm. Lose sleep over that. Amen. Lose sleep over some woman. Lose sleep over some man. What I'm going to do? I, I, I can't sleep. <laughs> Fool. Amen. What's the matter with you? Amen. You, you don't see yourself losing sleep that you're going to hell? Mm. Folks don't lose sleep over that. No. You tell them you're going to hell? 
Yeah. Wake up, man. Wake up. Don't you know you're going to hell? Yeah, I, look, I know it, but I'm asleep right now. Man, you better get it. Look, I ain't in hell yet. Amen. <laughs> they approach. Yeah. <laughs> they approach. It's so light. That's true. That's true. That's true. One thing that you should always include in your prayer. Ask God to give you the fear for him. Mm -hmm. The reason why this is of a vital importance is because the fear of the Lord had left 99.9 .9 of all churches. That's true. Do you know you can turn YouTube on or television? You can watch 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 preachers. You do good if one mm -hmm. even mentions fear God. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's now, true. you can mention it but do you know how to teach it? That's right. Because most people look at the word fear under one heading. Scared. Mm -hmm. Scared. Because look at here. The Bible says, let us say the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. All right? Another scripture says, God have not given us the spirit of fear. That's right. But then another scripture, he says, fear him. But the other scripture you said, he hasn't given you the spirit of fear. So fear have broad meaning. That's right. There's a way that God wants to be feared, but God don't give us the spirit of fear. What do you mean the spirit of fear? God don't make you walk around scared. Amen. When it comes to serving him, he don't want you to be scared or ashamed. That's right. That's right. Of him. I ain't scared and I ain't ashamed of God, but I don't care what people think of me when it comes to standing for their word. Mm -hmm. Man, you can call, I've been called, I don't even know what new name they can come up with. <laughs> call me whatever you want. I love it. Hey man, when I see you upset, you angry with me because <laughs> you're standing for the truth, man, I love it. <laughs> and it's funny to me because you find people don't, they don't miss the messages on YouTube. Mm -hmm. The same haters mm -hmm. on every single message. Yeah. They come back over and over and over and it won't change. God wants us to fear him, reverence him, respect him, mm -hmm. honor him. Respect and accept and believe what he can do to us yeah. as God. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal. I'm the Lord that does all these things. But when he said he didn't give you the spirit of fear, he don't want you to be afraid and ashamed Amen. and embarrassed mm -hmm. of him. That's right. You don't want him to be ashamed of you? No. Don't be ashamed of him. Don't be ashamed of letting your family or work people know that you in the church, mm -hmm. you serving God, Amen. that you will go to work looking different than what you look from at church because you worry about what people think, mm -hmm. that act alone shows you ashamed. Amen. That's true. Yeah, you ashamed of God. You should be able to walk from work and come to church. Right, right to church. Amen. Sure. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. But when you ashamed of God, Many scared at work. Long scared at church. <laughs> Many scared at work. And then when you get in your car, <laughs> you start changing. Mm -hmm. Or go in the ladies' room of the job. <laughs> Brother, same way. Mm -hmm. Don't be ashamed of God. Amen. Imagine God, be a, he'd be so ashamed of you. His shame keep you out the kingdom. You go, you, you want to, you go stand before him. Oh, you can't come in here. Uh huh. What, 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 why, Lord? Oh, I'm ashamed of you. See, you you gonna reap what you sow now. Mm -hmm. you, you're so ashamed of me on earth, and I'm so ashamed of you now. I don't want you in here. Mm -hmm. All right, listen. 
Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stop letting your past experience keep you in this long-term institution. Stop being mentally institutionalized, emotionally institutionalized, spiritually institutionalized, physically institutionalized. An inmate of your own existence. I believe one scripture says, he whom the Son has set free is free how? Indeed. Thank you for listening, brothers. All right. I'm still playing catch up with all this mail. I got so much piles of mail, piles of mail, piles of mail. I'm trying to catch up on it. I, I just can't catch up on it. But all of you brothers who... The prison agreed to let in. You that are on that list, please give your name to Sister Borkin the night that you're going. Uh, the shuttle bus will be leaving the church. What is it, on the 17th? 19th? We got to be, we will be leaving here at 6 that morning. And uh, get there, they're letting us have two services. Is it two servers in two different buildings or the same building? Two different ones? All right. Is this max or medium or what? Don't know? All right. Contact the chaplain at the institution where Pastor Taylor is, too. We want to get in there. I think that's max. That's max. Real hardcore criminals. That's my kind of place. I love to get in. Swing hard. I mean, we get in there and swing hard so I can hear the inmates grumble and get mad and jump up. What you talking about? Then I unleash the Bible on them. Boom! What? Oh! We've done it many a day. Man, we went in max, prison max. I mean, guards lined around. When the nation of Islam starts challenging us and the five percenters start challenging us and we take them scriptures, boom, boom, boom. I mean, we was popping up. We was popping the nation of Islam and the uh, five percenters so hard. <laughs> Some of the prisoners was jumping up just saying, what you talking about now? I mean, we were looking at the nation. What you talking about now? One inmate jumped up, get him, Gino. It was funny because when the nation came in, they had the prison uniform on and they all had on red bow ties. They did. I kid you not. They was in prison with the prison uniforms on. They all came in a straight line. Red bow tie. And I opened up the floor and let them ask questions. And they was asking me about triple darkness and uh, the creation of the white man and all this other stuff. Oh, I went into the Bible. It was so fun. I, they asked a question about the creation of the white man. I said, yeah, I know you're teaching. You believe that the white man is a result of a, uh, a laboratory experiment through grafting. According to what you teach, that there's this big head scientist by the name of Yakub who extracted the brown germ from the black man and started grafting. So they started saying, yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. I said, it's all a lie. <laughs> white, brother jump, white brother jumped up. Now who's the nigga? <laughs> this was in prison. Yes, he did. He jumped up. Now who's the nigga? I laughed. I went to work in the Bible. Yes, we did. Some of those nations went down in water, too. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care who you are. That Bible can handle you. you come to that Bible, that Bible can handle you. When the world realized that God's way is holiness, just search your Bible from Genesis all the way to the Revelation. You won't find where God told anybody to be anything else. Other than holy. God himself is not anything else. Other than holy. Man to be holy. And then 
so holy until when the Lord come, he tell you, come ye blessed. He accept you. When God accepts you, you know you have mastered the laws of holiness. And if you have mastered living up to the expectations of God until not even God will turn you away when he come for his people. When you keep that in mind, it'll help you keep your perspectives right. Stop being institutionalized, brothers and sisters. Let us, anybody want to be baptized? In the name of Jesus Christ, like the Bible requires, stand on your feet. If not, all right, come on back Sunday, God willing. Let us all stand. And to him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of the glory, the exceeding joy. Only wise God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory and power both now and forever. Brothers and sisters, say amen. Amen.